live from multiple locations via the miracle of Skype. It's the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing. Co-host, Ed Kaluka, Featuring Dangerous Dan Margetta. And Brian Schmidt. LTN is a caller-driven program, and your participation is encouraged by calling 414-421-7901. That's 414-421-7901. Now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailing. And welcome to the program. Glad you could join us. We are live in Las Vegas. Dan Margetta and I are we're doing a little something different this right year. Life. The last uh, few soul. years. There we go. That's beautiful. Dan Elvis Margetta uh, and I are both here in Las Vegas. However, unlike the last few years, we are neither one of us is at the track today. We're going to try it a little different today. We'll go there later. In the meantime, it is the Christopher Bell Show, 182.673 miles per hour. Glad you could join us. Todd and Dan here in uh, beautiful Las Vegas, joined by my two other partners, including Ed Kaluka of West Bend, Wisconsin. Morning, Eddie. Morning. Yeah, he seems to be real, awfully happy with the new car. He said he fell in love with it the first day he tested it, and he, he likes the car. So there you go. He loves the car. And that's uh, what a difference that makes. And, of course, Brian Schmidt of Ootsburg, Wisconsin. Hey, Brian. Morning. Kyle Larson's still second, and Kyle Larson's still he's still the best there is. Hard yeah. to bet against him today. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, three and a half. or He's seven to two, which is three and a half to one if you want to bet on him. Um do you realize that Kyle Larson, after his win last week at California, has won five out of the last seven cup races? How many did, how many did he steal from Chase Elliott? <laughs> well, just the one last week. You know, that is that, that was but I thought it's been really hilarious. Oh my God. Uh Elliot just didn't like the contact into the wall and cost him the race and call it swear words and everything. I, you know, usually he's the coolest cucumber in the bunch. He just is quiet and just says mumbles his answers. And, Oh, you don't want to be putting him in the race when he's got a shot to win. Or you're going to hear some F words. You didn't even know were there in his vocabulary. It was pretty funny. Ah, did they have milk and cookies this week? They were talking about it over at Hendrick. Remember that one? Sounds like, yeah, it sounds like they had a team meeting, and, and Rick actually led the team meeting, which hasn't happened in a while. It was all on Zoom because everybody's out, out here now. So, But uh, just that Mr. H made an appearance at the meeting, and I kind of both kind claims settled everybody's ass yeah. down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's completely figured out. But figured, look at the first two weeks. We had Daytona. We had teammates you know, slamming each other at the finish. And now we got uh, Larson and Elliott. So, I mean, teammates... <laughs> Fighting for the win, it's, it's kind of been a theme. And it's, you know, it has to be these new cars, Ed, right? I mean, they're they're just not used to how they act in turbulent air yet. Well, they haven't figured out how to adjust them, you know. I heard his comment made by, by uh, Kyle Busch yesterday before he spun, peeled off the tire, is that he thinks he has too much lead steer in the left rear. Now, there's a comment you'll only hear from independent rear suspension cars where you can adjust all four wheels for camber, caster, and tow. Not tow, huh. I know, but camber and caster. You know, um, and position. It, and, of course, so, uh, Kyle Busch crashed in qualifying. The only car to, to crash, he had a tire go down. Ed, tires are the big deal. He didn't have a tire go down. That thing peeled right off the rim. Oh! Yeah. And there's a, I talked with, you let me know how long I can go on this thing. But uh, you want to talk about it later or now or whatever? Yeah, maybe we'll we'll do it a little later on in the okay. show when we come back from this break. Yeah, the, the tires seem to be an issue with uh, with these new cars, and you know it, sometimes you got to work through some things to get them right, and that looks like it's the biggest deal. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, twenty car. <clears throat> Christopher Bell, 182, a little over 182 on this mile and a half track. That's 29.561. Uh, and Kyle Larson starts outside. Sindrick, the point leader, does that sound right? Starts third. 
Uh, and then uh, I get, I think he's a big surprise this year. Chase Briscoe, fourth in qualifying. Dan and I both went and bought tickets to see if this guy can win a race at 66 to one. Dan, I don't know if you noticed, but after qualifying, his numbers changed quickly. It's not as much imagine. of a bargain I mean, to get him. Well, you got to look at that. You got to look at who's running pretty decent in the last couple of weeks and who has a shot. I mean, this is all he needs is a shot, right? And look at Eric Jones last week. And he ended at 150 to 1 and third. So he had a shot. He didn't win it. But that's all he wanted is a chance. And traditionally in Vegas, long shots don't win at this race. So I don't think a long shot's ever won this race. But we got a new car in a lot of these situations. So, hey, it's Vegas. Maybe it could happen. And that's the guy. I have been. Uh... Pretty lucky in my betting so far this year, I have to say. Um, I had Eric Jones last week. Um, now, yes, he was 150 to one, but it wasn't to win. I in uh, in Phoenix at the ca- the casino right by my house, there is a, uh, a, a you can bet top three. First week, I picked Bubba top three. I got six and a half to one on that one, and I won because he finished second last week. Uh, here we got Eric Jones. He was 30 to one to finish in the top three and he ended up third last week. So, uh, as you might imagine, his odds are nowhere near that anymore. Uh, the secret is out. And what is it about that car? Why is he so good this year compared to past years? Well, it's the new car, Ed, it has to be, he's adapting better to the new car. Well, it's car control. I mean, you, the talent is going to definitely rise to the cream of the crop, but you're on this in a hurry. And uh, the ability of your engineers and uh, your your crew chief to find out exactly what this damn thing wants. You know, they're not sure yet what it wants. Uh-huh. I mean, and you take a guy like Bell or, you know, any of your dirt guys who are used to throwing a sprint car around with does hardly no adjustments on them at all. And they adapt to whatever you put under them. And it, uh, the track changes all night long from hard slick, taking rubber, not taking rubber. And you get that kind of talent, and you throw him into this car, and he's oh, this is comfortable. It feels, feels like my old sprint car. You never <laughs> know what you're going to get. You never know. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I'm of the opinion that Eric Jones is an extremely talented race car driver, and he is going to make Richard Petty uh, and that whole team look as good or better than they ever have before just by putting a great member. 80% of the deal is what climbs in through the window. That was uh, St. Robbie told us that years ago. So, um, yeah, that's that's the deal there. We are happy that you joined us as we're getting ready for the Las Vegas race. Um, you should be able to uh, watch it today on Fox Television, Channel 6 in Milwaukee. That's right. Uh, the race itself says 2.30, but the green flag will be at 2.49 Central Time. Unlike yesterday, when <laughs> Dan was out there and there were snow flurries in the stands, today it will. the forecast is partly cloudy with a high of 58 degrees and uh, no rain in the forecast. That's what we wanted to hear. And, of course, you will be able to hear it. Uh, the coverage starts at 1.30 on the Big 920's Twitter and Facebook page. Make sure you write that down. There's uh, other programming that you'll have to deal with on, on the radio here. The Twitter and Facebook page for the Big Night 20 will have the race, and the coverage starts at 1.30 this afternoon. So there you go. Um, if you would like to uh, participate in the program, you can do so at our uh, telephone number. It's a, a 414 area code number, 421-7901, and we would love to hear from you. And uh, I tell you what we should do. Let's uh, sneak away for our first break right now. We'll come back with a caller and some other fun things from Las Vegas. You're listening to LTN. Hang in there. It'll be here before you know it. America's National Park of Speed, Road America, has a thrilling, jam-packed race season coming May through September. Vintage racing, IndyCar, NASCAR, and more. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. 
from racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines. Just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at wagnerautomotive.com. EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Hepburn left side. Hepburn down! First place Badgers are on the game. They were a preseason pick to finish 10th, and then they played the games. Milwaukee's home for the most Badgers stuff. Hands off to Johnny, turns to the foul line, hanging, shooting, hitting, and one. Wisconsin closes out the regular season at home this Sunday against Nebraska. Matt LaPay's pregame at noon on the Big 920. Welcome back to LTN as we're getting ready for uh, racing at Las Vegas. It was always a uh, one of the uh, higher attended races. Boy, you certainly couldn't take anything away from the crowd they had at California last week, huh? That was beautiful. Um, they're, they're, we're, it's coming back, folks. It's, everything is looking good. Uh, California didn't look bad, and, uh, of course, Daytona was a sellout. Uh, Coliseum was a, well, I don't know if that was a sellout. It was a great crowd either way. And um, we're, we're very encouraged by all of that. And for all of you for listening to the program, including Greg in Faraway, Milwaukee, our first caller. Greg, thanks for calling, and uh, let's talk NASCAR. Hey, gentlemen, um, I, I want you to, to straighten me out a little bit. I don't know if my uh, eyesight is going or what, but it seems like <laughs> in the Fontana race, I thought I saw a small... Spoiler at the end of the uh, the trunk area, and I wanted to know if that's true, and then the difference between the rear spoiler and the diffuser. I thought the spoiler is what holds the car down, and I obviously understand that the diffuser does the same thing. So why both of them? You answered your own question. Go ahead. Is that the? They take the drag off the car by a small rear spoiler. They increase the oh. downforce with the diffuser. Uh-huh. And if you decrease the size of the spoiler, it enables the car behind to pass easier. That's the theory, anyhow. So they take the air off the top of the car, and they use the air under the car to hold it on the racetrack. Hmm. I thought they were going to get rid of the rear spoiler. No, it'll never happen. That, that won't, okay. No. Okay? All right. That's interesting. Thank you, sir. Hey, th- <laughs> thanks for calling, Greg. We appreciate it. And if anybody else would like to have a question for Ed, who knows all about diffusers, and, of course, that's he, – he, every week he educates me on something else on a race car. Uh, you can call us at 414-421-7901. Speaking of education, all right, Ed, um, these tires seem to be an issue because um, it seems like we're lo- losing air in tires. Uh, it was a, a hell of an issue in California. What's going on? Well, there's a combination. you got you got a manufacturer and you got a, a wheel builder, and – there's a, a tool called a ball tape. 
and you put the ball tape over the rim shell, and that goes into the seat where the tire rides. Now, on this ball tape, there's two dots that are about a quarter inch apart. And then there's a third dot on the other end of the tape that falls between those two dots. So you put that over the, the rim to find out it's a DOT spec, and that's halfway between those two dots. Well, I learned early on with Bastard years ago that you have to run to the high side of that spec to get enough crush against the cable. Inside the tire on the bead, there's a cable, and then there's a mount of rubber between the cable that gets compressed when it mounts onto the rim. Now, if the manufacturer of the rim made a DOT spec rim, that's not going to be enough crush against that cable to keep the tire on the rim. And I think that's what's happening. I talked to Kevin from Champion Tire, and he's going to check that out this week with a ball tape to find out where BBS is with the wheel. Now, the cable, the, the manufacturer, um, some people, Bill Tandusky, one of them, that he thinks they went to uh, road run soft technology, which puts that bunch of gook inside the tire uh, to keep it so that if you have a puncture, that it doesn't go flat. But who knows how much cable, how much crush they have against that cable. So it'd be a combination of Goodyear not having a, a big enough cable or BBS with the wheel not having a big enough wheel to hold that tire on a rim. I think it's BBS myself. I think that they made that, that wheel to DOT spec, and you can't do that with this heavy 3,400-pound car. Um, they don't seem to have the problem with, with uh, sports cars. Okay, As, On a rim shell itself, you got a, what's called an LB and a JJ rim flange. The LB has a tall flange with no bead bump. The other, the JJ, has a short bead flange with a bead bump. So... We, common, we combine the two when we build a race car wheel. We use a short bead flange, but no bead bump. Now, you could go to the bead bump where the tire has to climb over to seat itself, and you'd have, you'd have that device to hold the wheel on. But I think it's a rim I think it's a rim problem right now. I'm not sure it's a Goodyear problem. And Greg Stucker's not answering his phone, so I can't answer him. You know, everybody's calling Greg Stucker to ask him about it. That run flat technology now on a on a street car that means really really hard sidewalls, right? Right, right. And it, because <laughs> it happened to me. Yeah. So, on the way out to on the way out here, Ed, a couple of years ago, Marge was driving the Cadillac, and uh, and uh, I was and you know to have taken a break in the passenger seat. She says the computer just came on. It says we got zero air pressure in one of the. Uh, one of the uh, come on, and it was a rear tire, zero air pressure. I said, "Well, something must be wrong with the sensor." That's you no, know, Todd. You're, the, you're running on a sidewall. Exactly. It had it did have zero when we pulled over, and you couldn't tell the difference in the car. It, it just ran ran perfectly, and it had zero pressure in it. And yeah, those are so. expensive tires too. So it, it's a combination of either Goodyear and BBS. Or one being wrong, one being right. So, hmm. and they're going to. There's going to be an ongoing problem because the reason I think it's the rim shell is because when they get a flat tire, instantly that whim starts spinning inside the casing of the tire. Hmm. So that tire is not hanging onto that wheel at all. They That's... better do something pretty quick because they. I mean, you can't keep getting these cars going two laps down, waiting for them to hook up that weird apparatus they have to get the car off the racetrack where it goes over the top of the wheels and it gets tied into the wheels and they lift it up. You know. Nobody better get very comfortable with two laps to go because you never really know, right? No, you don't know. You don't know. Oh, my goodness. There's the. I mean, Kyle's deal, it was so obvious that you could see the left rear come right off the rim. I mean, when, he, when that car started to change directions, the tire was already off the rim. So, yeah, Unbelievable. Well, uh, they will get it fixed. You know, it's just the question That's is, how long of, will it take? As part of the nuance of this, this unknown factors of these wheels, and I mean, we got, like it, they have to be so careful how they leave pit road. As in, the driver has to learn how to drive all over again because you can't just dump the clutch. Because the half shafts on these cars won't take it. They'll they'll start breaking half shafts. So we're coming to you from sunny Las Vegas where we're gonna be racing this afternoon in the Pennzoil 
400. The green flag is at 249 Central Time, and you'll be able to see it on Fox 6. We'll be right back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrood outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Elkhart Lakes Road America this 4th of July weekend. The NASCAR Quick Trip 250 presented by Jockey Made in America and the NASCAR Xfinity Series Henry 180 guarantees high-speed thrill and endless family fun. Enjoy the family fun zone, camping on site, and free admission for kids 16 and under with a paying adult. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Road America, your national park of speed. The madness of March is here. The 2022 Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament tips off this week on Compass Media Networks, live from Indianapolis, Indiana. Be sure to join us for all the exciting action as one of the nation's top basketball conferences battles it out for a spot in the NCAA Tournament. Who will come away with this year's tournament crown? If it's the Big Ten Tournament, it's right here. For the complete schedule, go to our website, thebig920.com. couple of questions. I see Bill Tandetsky on Facebook asked uh, about uh, run-flat technology. And, and, you know, he didn't know if it, it worked at speeds over 100 miles an hour. First of all, I couldn't get Marge to go 100 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Not to her head. But well, we the thing of it is that... 84. Yeah, the thing of it is that you just don't know. It's just... The reason they... they there's a lot of reasons they went to the great big rim, the 18-inch rim shell. And they get big brakes in these cars. Now, if you lose a tire, that big rotor, it rides on the rotor to come back to the pits if you lost a wheel. Okay? Mm-hmm. And now with the big big rim shell, the reason we ran innerliners in the past was that the 15-inch wheel, when it went flat, the, the, the rim wasn't big enough to get a hold of the racetrack because the frame would drag. So they put innerliners in there as a safety factor to keep that rim off, to keep the frame off the ground well with the 18 inch wheels the rim still goes around and you you ride on the rim shell but you got to have a tire that'll stay on the rim to get back to the pits and that doesn't that's not working right now not right now i yeah, they'll get it it'll it'll take some time but they'll get it i'm sure you know and uh, give them give them a couple of weeks but the trouble is there is a definite shortage on these cars still there's a shortage. There's a shortage of parts. There's a shortage of completed cars. And I, I'm not sure we did have uh, plenty of head uh, room to get this thing figured out and get the parts here on time. Ed, I can't believe that we're still having a, a car shortage. Well, they're, they're, they got their, they're building as fast as they possibly can to get enough vehicles out there so that you can yeah. have a backup car for every car number. Yeah, well, and uh, as we learned last fall from Josh Balicki, uh, every uh, team of two cars, for you can only have one backup car. for Dan, that's the way it worked, right? One backup car for every two uh, team cars. In other words, there's one for the five and the nine, and then there's one backup also for the 48 and the uh, 
And the other Hendrick car. 24. Blah, blah, blah. 24. 40, uh, right, right. Right, uh, 24 cars. So, um, you know, they only bring two backups to the track. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's That's partially, I think it's because they're, they're short, right? Right. I mean, until they can get everything built, they'll have eventually each team will have a backup car for each car. But right now, with the way the situation is, they just bring one one per team and, and hope they don't have to, you know, use more than that. They don't have to go like, you know, lease cars from somebody else. <laughs> it's just out. like it's just like everything else in the world. You know, parts are hard to get. I mean, if you if you want to go and build something at your house, it's going to take forever for you to get to get parts for that if you want to go and get something for a vehicle that's special a lot of dealerships don't have the parts you need it's like that in everything right now so it's not unique to nascar that they're not getting the parts for these things part of this supply chain you know issue that we have i know is because we had a lot of stuff coming from overseas why is it such a big issue in the u.s of a don't even go down that road that's still a backlog from when everything was shut down almost two years ago now oh, you know okay. it's just like so it's thank you joel well, it's it's uh, a ripple effect, in other words, Brian. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's what it like is. Like shutting down, like shutting down all of oil wells in in Alaska and shutting off the pipeline from Canada. That made a lot of sense. So now we could spend all of our money. Oh, I know, in Russia. So now we buy Ed, the crude from Ed, Russia. We'll save and the sucks. politics for the for the hangover show where where it's mostly uh, uh, don't welcome. Go, that's why I said, for us don't there. go there. Hey, speaking of which, how about a couple of the NASCAR owners that are getting involved in what's going on in Eastern Europe over there in Ukraine? Richard Childress uh, is sending, he, he's on the board of directors for a place called Ammo Incorporated, and they're sending one million rounds of ammunition to Ukraine because he heard President Zelensky say, you know, send more ammunition. Well, wh why should that be an issue? You know, aren't, we, we're not getting involved, but at least we should be sending ammunition. Well, Richard Childress is doing that. Plus, Rick Hendrick, uh, through his Hendrick Automotive Group, is sending $200,000 in cash to a place called Samaritan's Purse, which is going to go directly over to Ukraine, plus, plus $2,000 for every lap led by one of his cars today. So um, uh, between Childress and Hendrick, our hats are off to you guys. Uh, you know, you can you can watch it on TV or you can get involved. And those guys definitely got involved. And that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, if you'd like to call us, 414-421-7901 is the number. And, uh, you know, I Brian, I, I'm a little bothered by this. I saw a rumor this week that um, there's a possibility, not a possibility. Right now it's a rumor uh, that they're going to put a street course uh, in downtown Chicago, what in the hell are they thinking about? First of all, you've got probably the top road course in the world right up the street here at Road America where they had the most successful NASCAR race of the entire season last year. Why would you mess with something like that by having a Chicago street course? Well, if you remember last year, they did a, a virtual race on that track. Uh, it was a track that ran through Grant Park area, uh, the Buckingham Fountain, all that area down there. And they did a, a virtual thing. And we hadn't heard anything about it now for probably a good nine nine months or so. And I saw one of the reporters, uh, I think it was Stern, put it up that they're still talking about it. You know, I think after a lot of people had said that it was going to be something that would probably go forward. That was before the Road America race. After we had the Road America race last year and the, and the screaming success it was, I believe it was probably the highest attended race on the entire it schedule was. last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of that went away, but there's still some people that are pushing for it. I personally don't think, and I'm pretty sure the success we had at Road America, if we continue to have that success going forward, it's not going to be an issue. They're going to keep that race up there because, I mean, you, how do you walk away from something that's that successful? The amount of campers you had there, the amount of people that came there. You know, most of the people from the Chicago area come up here to get away from what's going on in the city. Yeah, no and, kidding. And not to mention now, you know, you also have to look at what's going on in that part of Chicago. You know, the, the Miracle Mile isn't anymore. I mean, it's it's it was trashed uh, over a year ago, and it hasn't been rebuilt. So there's a lot of work that would have to be done down there before a race would even be possible to, to go. So I think it's just a lot of media people that probably don't really know what's going on up here and how great it is up here that are still pushing for something like that. I really don't realistically see it happening anytime soon. So, I, you know, I think Road America is very safe. All right. That's what we wanted to hear. 
Ah, uh, yes. And uh, at this point, seems like a good t- time to take a little break and come back with you. Uh, uh, Dan Margetta and I are in uh, Las Vegas getting ready for the Pennzoil 400 this afternoon. We return in just a minute. It'll be here before you know it. America's National Park of Speed, Road America, has a thrilling, jam-packed race season coming May through September. Vintage racing, IndyCar, NASCAR, and more. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Matthew Olivier straight ahead, forehand, and he scores! The Milwaukee Admirals homestand continues on Sunday when the Admirals take on the Grand Rapids Griffins at UW-Milwaukee Panther Arena. Backhand side, he scores! Pre-game coverage starts at 4.30. Face-off is at 5 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And welcome back to LTN. They had a couple of races already this weekend, Friday night. Uh, they ran the uh, truck series. It was uh, the Smith brothers. <laughs> They're not really brothers. Chandler Smith holding off Zane Smith. I think the most important part of that race was the fact that Kyle Bush was in the race and did not win it. Um, I, Dan, you can explain uh, odds to me, but he had negative odds. That means what? You, to, to win $100, you have to bet like 140 or something? Right, whatever, whatever the number is. If it's minus 125, you got to bet 125 to win 100. So you're oh, kind of okay. underwater. Here. And he's, that's how big of a favorite he was. And uh, what means that when something like that happens, the, the odds go up on a lot of other guys. I mean, Chandler Smith had pretty decent odds, I guess, going on there. And he had a, the same you know, truck out of the same team. A lot of people will flock to those guys to see if they can and take the shot that, you know, fade on Kyle Busch and maybe he won't be there, which is what happened. And it was uh, a pretty pretty impressive race, too, I would say. Yesterday, the Xfinity Series ran, and Ty Gibbs won uh, the first race of the year. Um, I, what, to me, stuck out from yesterday that I took away from it is that Sam Mayer um, is coming along pretty nicely. He led and uh, looked good, ran up front. It's a little bit like, uh, like watching our... Uh, our Wisconsin guys in the truck series between Ty Majeski and Derek Krause, they both looked pretty damn good in that truck race the other night. And uh, between those three drivers, I think we got first wins not too far off. Gentlemen, you agree? I think they're coming. And as far as Sam Mayer, you don't have to hold him back. I mean, Sam is on, on kill, it looks like, from the start. And it's almost to the point maybe you got to turn him back a little bit. I think uh, he had a shot yesterday. I, I don't, he was up front, and then he had that, that pit stop, and he lost some some ground towards the end but he was coming back up there and uh just kind of wasn't really clear the 19 car when he got you know in the incident he got in but what'd you say brian that that sam mayor will go when you tell him to go oh hell yeah i mean at at, at daytona i mean he was they, they're like cautioning him to to not do some of the moves he did and you know we're listening to it on the radio and you look on the track and oh he's going anyway you know so yeah he's one that you know they always say it's you can't push a rope so you can always try to pull him back. And I think that's the situation you have with Sam. And hopefully it'll pay off pretty soon. Yes, no kidding. Uh, the, uh, the, pers- the the rivalry between himself and Ty Gibbs. Gibbs got away just a little bit here. And uh, Sam's got uh, – he he's making – I think Sam is right on schedule. But, you know, a, a talent like Ty Gibbs doesn't come around all that often. And, uh, my God, uh, is he getting something better than everybody else? Or is he just that good? Uh, he's got a lot of luck involved with it, too. You know, I mean, and then, you know, Ty Gibbs has got to be careful now. He's he's going to run a full season here in the Xfinity Series. And his issue yesterday with Sieg, you know, that that's not going to that's not going to go well with those older guys. So, you know, it, it, you can only say I'm sorry so many times before you're going to get it paid back. And I kind of could see that maybe coming down the road here for Ty Gibbs because he's making moves that are like, it's so early in the race to be pushing it like that. Again, you don't, you know, you don't, it's always easier to, you can't push a rope. It's easier to pull back, but he is just, he just goes. And then he's lucky enough to uh, win it last night. You know, did he so. ever touch Sieg or was that one of those air off? Oh the spoiler yeah. Thing? No, yeah. He no, touched he him. He touched him. Oh, okay. All right. He, he touched him. He crashed him. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and then he and then, you know, in front of the camera, he's real apologetic about it and everything, but when you talk to Sieg, he was not that apologetic. Yeah, you know, that happens, you know. I mean, Sieg, that's his own family stuff there. You know, that that's their own equipment that he wrecked and now they got they got to sit out there another week with with wrecked equipment. So, that's only going to go well, so far. So, if if Ty can reel it back in a little bit, calm down and, you know, be a little more sympathetic to some of these teams cuz the Xfinity series is full of lower budget teams and you can't just go to wrecking them. Well, look at it, what C did after me. He was down so many laps and he got it back on the racetrack. That was almost like put four tires on this thing. I'm getting that guy. Yeah. And that he missed. Exactly what it he was. went out and he, he damn near got him back. Yeah, and he they missed. Had, <laughs> they had told him to um, come in. He wasn't making minimum speed and that's exactly what that was. He was waiting on that 54. Speaking of progress, how about Derek Krause? Um, that that is really fun to watch. He has been uh, uh, probably not as quickly as we wanted to see him running up front, but now all of a sudden he's he's got the gift. Uh, he's been running up front. And what happened on that last lap? Did anybody see that? What? Uh, how did he? Did he just get pushed out of the wave because everybody was racing for the win? No. Well, it looks like I mean they were all scrambling at the end of that truck race, and he was. On kill going forward, and I think he just got turned, didn't he? he got he got clipped uh, towards the end, turned sideways, and, and was saved it. On, right down a back stretch, saved it, didn't wreck, lost like twenty spots. But they, they, yeah, I was waiting for the camera to cut away and see him in a fence, and that didn't happen. So um, just going for it, and didn't work out. There was another one, eighty to one. I had him at the other night, and I, he's running up front towards the end of the race. I'm going, yeah, that's what we want to see right there. And uh, also, Ty Majeski, uh, it, it's not like he needed a lot of development time, but he's running up front immediately in that truck. That's pretty cool. Well, it's a good group, and that's what, kind of what we had hoped was going to happen. And you know, talking with Johnny when we were at Daytona, Johnny also thought the same thing that that was going to be a group that was going to you know, mesh together really well. Him and Joe are going to work together real well. Ty really knows the ins and outs of these trucks. That helps a lot too. You know, there's a lot of kids in that field that aren't in the same boat as Ty. Ty knows how these things work. He helps build a lot of the stuff over there at Thor Sport. That gives him an advantage on him too. So I see him winning a race. Not far I wasn't. I wasn't all that impressed with him yesterday. Really? No, not at all. Friday I mean, night. He, yeah, Friday night. I mean, he 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 showed signs of going forward. But then he's on just as much signs as going backwards. You know, I mean, it, it, it uh, he never, he spent a lot of time running around a 20th position. That's not, that's not good. I, I just hope of- that. I just hope that the you know repercussions of, of the incident when he was carried up high and he kind of got loose, lost it, and took out the teammate truck, that doesn't carry forward. They can put that behind him. You know, hope that that doesn't go into the next few weeks as far as that. that that's over and done with. Uh, you're running up front, keep going. I don't think it's over and done with Ben Rhodes. I, he's not that kind of guy to give up. <laughs> there you go. Don't you uh, think? Yeah. Dan? I don't know. Yeah. Hard to say, you know. We'll, we'll see. I, I, don't know. I mean, I, I, in the past, I've seen Ben Rhodes, yeah, yeah, I, you know, not forget about things like that. I think him and Ty are pretty good buddies, and we'll see if the, how good friends they are. I mean, if you watch the, the, you know, the replay of it, I don't think it was done purposely. It was one of them racing kind of deals kind of thing. Uh, they work in the same shop all but, week long. The betterment of the team, it's you know maybe you need to have a little milk and cookies meeting then and say well, you know going forward we were both <laughs> running fast. Don't let this bring us down. There you go. A uh, couple of cars today failed inspection twice. When that happens, you lose your pit selection and one crew member. Uh, the four car uh, of Harvick lost his car chief, as did Elliott uh, in the nine, Harrison Burton in the 21, Todd Gilliland in the 77, and oh no, Josh Balicki, the 77 car, lost his engineer. I, the good news about that, though, it didn't affect his odds out here in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas, Josh Balicki remained at 2,000 to 1 to win the race today. Only one car goes to the rear, and that would be Kyle Bush. He, and it's because he crashed his car. In, uh, car. I just uh, got to finish up one, one thing about the truck race. Is that, you know, I rely a lot on the scanner, and I, I have to be able to listen to what's going on between the crew chief and a driver, and the changes they're making. And for some unknown reason, either Ty Majeski is using the old 13 scanner slot, but you can't get him on a scanner. So that kind of upset me a little bit. Not be, I, There was a little blurb I heard. Uh, for some reason, I heard uh, Joe Shear say, go two rounds down on a track bar. 
And I thought to myself, oh, my God, here we go again, you know? But <laughs> Ty's, uh, Ty's doing all right in my book. He was, he's, remember, he's only been in that thing for a couple of races, and uh, things, are, things are looking pretty good over there. We'll be back. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Elkhart Lakes Road America this 4th of July weekend. The NASCAR Quick Trip 250 presented by Jockey Made in America and the NASCAR Xfinity Series Henry 180 guarantees high-speed thrill and endless family fun. Enjoy the family fun zone, camping on site, and free admission for kids 16 and under with a paying adult. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Road America, your national park of speed. EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to EnviroMulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMF landscape.com friends of racing for many years bmf landscape supply in west bend we're at vegas it's great to see you on your feet here today at las vegas let's go racing in sin city it's the pinzoil 400 truex drops down to the bottom of the racetrack hamlin goes back up to the top side now it's three wide chase elliott dives to the inside of kyle larson along the front stretch keselowski right on hamlin's bumper hamlin still hanging on to the lead coverage of the pinzoil 400 from las vegas starts at 1 30 for the link go to our facebook page twitter page or our website the big nine 20. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. The dirt racing scene getting back to almost full song here now after being off a couple weeks for Speed Weeks. We'll start Friday night down in Petty, Texas, the Rocket Raceway Park for the United States Modified Touring Season Touring Series season opener. Say that five times fast. 5,000 win for night number one. That went to Dustin Sorensen. He had 76 modifieds entered in that opening night event. Clarksville, Tennessee, the 18th annual Tuckasy Toilet Bowl Classic. This is Todd's favorite event of the year, I know. <laughs> night number one, 3,000 win for the super late models. They called it the plunger. So you get a plunger one night, you get a toilet the next night. Dennis Earp Jr. from nearby Carpenterville, Illinois, was your winner Friday night in the UMP modifieds. Lucas Lee was your winner. Swainsboro, Georgia, the Spring Nationals Late Model Series, the Crank It Up 100, $10,053 to win for that one. Brandon Overton was your winner there. Also, in Friday night, down in Page, Texas, the Cotton Bowl Speedway for the World of Outlaw NOSH Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. Sheldon Howden's child was your winner Friday night. Last night, Casa Grande, Arizona, the Central Arizona Speedway. They had the IMCA Modified Special there. Spencer Wilson was your winner. Also of note, in the IMCA Sport Mods, uh, guest of the show a couple weeks back, Taylor Cool. She came from 11th to win that feature there last night, so congratulations to her. Nice run there. Night number two in Petty, Texas at the Rocket Raceway Park for the USMTS Modifieds. 10,000 to win last night. Tyler Davis was your winner. Clarksville, Tennessee, the Toilet Bowl Classic. $7,500 to win for the UMP Late Models. What is it with the toilets? Yeah, they give you get a full-size toilet. The whole, the whole nine yards, you could actually use it if you want. Corey Hedgecock passed. Dennis Herb Jr. late in the race to pick up the win there. The 3,000 to win 604 crate feature winner. That was also Corey Hedgecock, so he, he made a, a lot of money there with the toilet operation. And the UMP Modifieds, Alan Weiser was your winner. Sonoya, Georgia, the Spring Nationals late model series, $10,053 to win there. Shane Clanton 
picked up the win there. Maryville, Tennessee, the Smoky Mountain Speedway, the Tennessee Tip-Off Classic, 12,000 to win for the Super Late Models. Brandon Overton picked up the winner there. And finally, Page, Texas, night number two for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars at Cotton Bowl Speedway. Carson Macedo picked up the win there last night. That is everything for this week. Dan, where was that race that was sponsored by some plumbing supply? Was it either Madison or Slinger that Dave Filer won and then sat on the toilet on the start-finish line? Yeah, that's what you do at this one, too. Oh, you do? Yeah. Corey Hedgecock <laughs> got to sit on the toilet twice because he won two features. So he brought home two toilets. He could outfit a whole new house. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I forgot where it was, but it was just hilarious. And he sits there with a big smile on his face. It's like like reading a paper. Uh, there isn't a heck of a lot to give you from the world of asphalt racing. As far as results go, uh, the Alabama 200 was yesterday at Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, the, the headline is that Hunter Robbins won the race. For us locally, what was important was that Johnny DeAngelis was down there. It was a pro late model race. And, uh, Ed, you watch that thing. He was kicking ass in that thing until, uh, what, a, a lap? car got them right yeah well they had to, there were rules that if you have a competition caution if five cars stand on a racetrack and you're the leader and you pit you get to set you get to be the first car behind the cars that pitted well you he started in that position and it was a bond of, bunch of wet sticks of dynamite and he got tangled up in a yeah. crash and took him out but he was a class of the field before that oh happened, yeah right? definitely and that's yeah. nasty nancy i can't pronounce his name I don't oh, know Stephen if you, Massey? Yeah. Yeah. If you're just saving his tires and running about he he maintained about a oh five seconds behind DeAngelis for about a hundred laps. Oh, and boy. then the yellow started to come and it turned everything upside down. Uh, the big news this week in the world of short track racing, uh, first Dave Coleman got it started when he talked to Matt Kenseth, who kind of tipped him off that uh, Matt was going to increase his, his short track racing, and he mentioned Slinger and Madison. Well, Madison was announced uh, today, as a matter of fact, that uh, Matt Kenseth is going to race in the Joe Shear Classic on May 5th. First, that will be a 15,000 to win event. And then uh, we this week we hear that uh, the uh, Arca Midwest Series is going to race at the Slinger Speedway. You thought something that <laughs> might never happen. It's a miracle. <laughs> it is. It's called Miracle on the High Banks. And uh, it's going to be a dual points race. It's the opener at Slinger Speedway. It's going to be the first of the Elite Eight Super Late Model races. So it'll have points for both the Slinger Championship and the Arca Midwest Tour Championship. And then, of course, right after that, then the Midwest Tour the next week goes to Madison with uh, uh, Matt Kenseth there. Matt also announced this week that uh, he's going to be racing a couple of S three SRX races. I understand the Nashville race. Perhaps you guys can explain to me why he would pick out two dirt track races to go to. Easy. It's fun to drive, and uh, he can drive a loose race car. He must want the challenge. <laughs> or it fits into his schedule. Yeah, probably the schedule. That's pretty cool that Matt's going to race on the dirt, though. Uh, he did race at uh, Stewart's deal, right, at the Prelude? Yeah. yeah. Was, I think he's been at Cedar Lake once, too, as far as in a, a dirt car. I think he's yeah. pretty good. Brian... Yeah, how was he in that uh, in that prelude? Uh, he he didn't fare real well. One time he was in one of Jimmy Mars' cars, and I think the next year he was in one of uh, Mark Richards' house cars. And I mean, Jimmy Mars, he said it was a real struggle. I remember Jimmy Mars telling me that. <clears throat> and then the the Rocket one, he did a little bit better. But you know, that's a big half mile. These are small tracks. These two SRX races, Sharon Speedway in Ohio and and Peavy Missouri I-55 these are these are small 3 eighths and, and quarter mile tracks so that's going to be a real challenge for him in there I remember back early in his career that I suggested to him that he should go get a, a dirt late model so he knows what it feels like to back a car into the corner he got mad at me yeah and uh, but then he went out and got a dirt late model and started backing it in the corner ha huh? And, and uh, now he likes, I guess he likes running on these or he wouldn't say that he's coming back. But it's pretty cool. Um, all the way around, uh, I think the, the news has been great. Of course, um, uh, we, Coleman's article, by the way, did suggest that Matt uh, is going to be coming to Slinger Speedway. That has not been announced yet. But today is the official announcement uh, for Madison. So uh, pretty and cool. They, I thought and he did a good job in the, in the booth uh, in the TV deal last week as well. He was great. Hey, did, uh, did 
Did that little piss ad call him a prick or not? <laughs> sure sounded like it. And along the same lines, if they're going to have the guest interview stage winners, please let Ricky Stenhouse win a race today or a stage yeah. today. <laughs> today or next week. Danica's doing two weeks in a row. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Hey, old buddy. Yeah. That, that... <laughs> And didn't I think I just saw something? She broke up with her latest boyfriend post Rogers, uh, anyway. So, oh, isn't that be just romantic? That's just beautiful, isn't the it? The days of our lives. Matt yes. was Matt was pretty damn good last week. Didn't Better than I give him credit. Better than I give him credit for. Ed, thanks so much for running the show. Let's do that after the break, huh? From no. racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building champion winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions Questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at wagnerautomotive.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Elkhart Lakes Road America this 4th of July weekend. The NASCAR Quick Trip 250 presented by Jockey Made in America and the NASCAR Xfinity Series Henry 180 guarantees high-speed thrill and endless family fun. Enjoy the family fun zone, camping on site, and free admission for kids 16 and under with a paying adult. Don't wait. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Road America, your national park of speed. Hepburn left side. Hepburn down! Off the glass with 1.2 to play! The first place Badgers are on the game. They were a preseason pick to finish 10th. Then they played the games. Milwaukee's home for the most Badgers stuff. Hands off to Johnny. Turns to the foul line. Hanging, shooting, hitting, and one. Wisconsin closes out the regular season at home this Sunday against Nebraska. Matt LaPay's pregame at noon on the Big 920. And let's take a couple of calls to end the program. If you'd like to give us a holler, 414-421-7901. Bruce in faraway Milwaukee. How you doing, man? Very good. I uh, just want to say that I was a lifetime member of the Matt Kenseth Fan Club, and I'm so glad he got to talk to the 22 car. But I don't think he'd say too much for him if they were face-to-face. Probably not. I I really didn't hear it the way everybody else did. Immediately, Dan and Ed and Brian are all saying, hey, did you hear that? He called him a prick. I don't think he did. He said something like, uh, hey, friend. But then when I listened to it over again, I went, oh, my God, he called him a prick. So, uh, to know Matt is to uh, know that he did a great job, and I hope they have him back again. Yeah, great. And I agree with you. Thanks so much, Bruce, for the call. Yeah, I texted Matt after that, and uh, Matt did not think that that's what he said, just so you know, uh, that, that he didn't think think it that way at all. All right, fellas, I'm sure that your uh, fantasy league has been uh, is all warmed up, and uh, the LTN gang is all uh, uh, in the middle of this. Ed, how are they doing? How, how are we doing? I'm not doing so well. <laughs> I don't know about the other two. I keep forgetting to set a lineup. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do too bad <clears throat> last week. So this week I have Christopher Bell, Chase Briscoe, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, and Austin Sindrick. All guys I have not used yet because you only get ten starts oh. out of each guy. So you kind of got to watch how you do it. And then I got Kyle Larson in the garage. So if one of those other guys crashes and Kyle Larson is leading, you're going to put him in. And uh, Dan. You and I being out here in Las Vegas, it seems, you know, 
logical that we would be putting some money on some drivers. I don't have as many as you. I did get Chase Briscoe at 66 to 1 today, and that was before qualifying. His odds dropped dramatically after qualifying. But I did get Kyle. Uh, Kyle started at 14 to 1, which is what I bet on him. And uh, after, you know, yeah, and there was a lot of money that was being directed towards, I mean, I'm sorry, Kyle Busch, uh, a lot, uh, his way. And I think that brought his number down until he spun in, pre- in uh, qualifying. So his number went back up again. But uh, who do you have today? I've got Chase Briscoe at 66 to 1. I have Tyler Reddick at 14 to 1 because I think he's on the verge of, of closing one off here and, and getting a win. And I took William Byron at 10 to 1 because Byron's been fast the first two weeks, and another guy got caught, caught up in wrecks and had some bad luck. But at uh, California last week, he was just as fast as Reddick and Jones and probably would have ran him down had he not caught in the, in the wreck he got in. So Byron, Reddick, and Briscoe are the three I've got. Obviously, the favorite here is Kyle Larson. His odds are really low, so unless you're going to bet a ton of money on him, it's probably not you know good to throw like 20 bucks Three and out. a half to one is what the, uh, officially he's at. But the last week, he was at four to one, and I put 20 bucks on him last week and won. So, you know, even though the odds are low, a win is a win, right? And we'll take that any day. Yeah. And how about those but, Richard Childress cars? I mean, Tyler Reddick was a dominant car last week, and, and Austin yep. Dillon finishes second. I mean, is this, this team maybe... Are they maybe going to turn the corner here and, and be a, a team that is going to be there for the win every week? That would be kind of cool. The new car has been very good to uh, the Richard Childress team in general, right? Yeah, I would yeah. say. I mean, Reddick, poor Reddick. I mean, he, he's so close to getting that win. He could, you could he could taste it, you know, and you have a dominant car and something goofy, you know, like a tire gets cut. And then, you know, not only does it, you, you cut your tire and, and that's a bad, new, but then you get cleaned out in the process, you know, by a just an, an, it was an accident you know and then that really ends your day that was that was too bad because I, I think i think he was probably the fastest car last week uh, yeah i think so too all right so um even though i bet on kyle bush and uh and you know and briscoe that's not who i'm gonna say when we all make our picks right now just because i've been so bad that i hope i my my bad luck continues. I'm taking Joey Logano today to win here at Vegas. Ed, who do you get? I think Ed's mic is uh, having a problem there. All right, we'll go to Dan. I took the 20 oh. car because he's been talking about how much he likes these cars. Oh, okay. There you go. And Dano? Oh, I'm gonna. It's Vegas. Why not take a long shot? Isn't that, they've never won at Vegas, but I'm going to put it all on red. Chase Briscoe, the red 14. Ah, uh-huh. and boy, don't I hope you did that one. You got him at 66 to 1. Brian, what do you got? Uh, you left a, lay, a low-hanging fruit for me, so I'll, I'll take Kyle Larson. Oh, I'm gonna leave it's him there. too easy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, take, last take, week, well, I'm, take, go ahead. Take Chase Elliott, Brian. Nah. I Jason, well, I mean, he's going to be right there, too, but um, Larson's just better. Larson, by the way, uh, even though I put my money on him last week on this program, I picked Keselowski. So, so far, things are going right. I never pick him right on this program, and uh, that's why that's a good reason to take Joey Logano today. But, uh, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Larson is, uh, like, in a different class. Uh, so you guys don't think Kyle Busch has got a shot from the rear today? Anyone in a backup car? That that's My money is gone? Those, those Gibb cars just haven't been that good so far. I mean, yeah, we have a small sample size. They seem to be the team that, <clears throat> if you're looking at the teams that are stepping up, you got Childress stepping up, you got Stuart Haas stepping up a little bit. The ones that seem to be taking a little bit of a step back right now are the Gibbs cars. It may not Toyota's stay that in way. in general, Dan, right? Well, they've had an overheating issue the last first couple of weeks. And uh, like last week at, at, at California, it was a screen they had put on, on, on the grill. They put their own screen in, kind of a, an extra one, hoping because California and Vegas, they have winds and they have a lot of dust and, and debris to keep it out of, out of the grill. And it actually shot them. They shot themselves in the foot and actually didn't let the air in the grill, and that's why they had some overheating things. They claim they got that fixed for Vegas, and it uh, uh, should be okay, but we'll see. That was a 2311 car, too? Yes, all the Toyotas. All the Toyotas had that extra stuff. My God, that time goes fast. Well, Dan, as lucky as you have been in Las Vegas this weekend, and folks, make no mistake, Dan Margetta has been doing very well in the casinos this week. Uh, yeah, we hope that you win on that on that, uh, that beautiful Chase Briscoe pick that you just did. So, hey, thanks, and we do appreciate it. And uh, 
something we like everybody to keep in mind is that real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our in-house engineer, website coordinator, and king of the knobs is Matt Hangover Losi. For everybody involved with the program, we appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you next week, this everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at Facebook.com slash LTN Radio Network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network. Nursing isn't a career, it's a calling. Answer the call with Marquette University's Direct Entry MSN program and find out what it means to be a Marquette nurse. A Marquette education, it holds a lot of weight. Before I graduated, I already had a job offer in the ICU. If you hold a non-nursing bachelor's degree, use it to earn your master's in nursing in less than 21 months. My name is Shelby and I am a Marquette nurse. Search Marquette Direct Entry MSN today.